history of Mayport is a wild tale involving much of the Jacksonville area. Many shades of life have colored the banks of this coastal riverside village. The first inhabitants of this area, the Tamuquan Indians, called the St. John's River the Wallaca River. The Tamuquans fished and collected oysters in her waters. They hunted alligators and deer. They farmed corn, beans, squash, all along the banks of the Wallaca River. So one spring day, the Tamuquans saw a sailboat approaching from the other side of the river. They saw John Rabot kneel in prayer, proclaiming the safe arrival and hope for Protestants in the New World. For on May 1st, 1562, he landed and named the River May, the Rivere de May. And there, probably in the vicinity of Fort George Island, he came ashore, knelt, and prayed the first Protestant prayer of America. So on May 2nd of 1562, Ribot crossed the River May and stepped foot on the land of Mayport. John Ribot met with local chief Satariba. They exchanged gifts and knowledge as Satariba showed him around the south bank of the river. In his journal, Ribot expresses his first impressions. We entered and received the country thereabout, which is the fairest, fruitfulest, and pleasantest of all the world abounding in honey, venison, wild fowl, and forests with woods of all sorts. Rivo erects a marble monument in honor of religious freedom and negotiates plans with Satariba to return with more people and start the first Protestant colony in the New World. Two years later, René de Laudonnière, another French Huguenot, returns and establishes the first colonial settlement. They named it Fort Caroline. And not only did the natives give them the land, they helped build the fort, which I think is so remarkable when you look at the Spanish attempts to colonize and the hostilities they had with the natives. But on June 30th, 1564, they first gathered in what I call the first Thanksgiving of America. There at La Caroline, the natives and the colonists from France come together and thank God for their journey, for their new home, and they begin living together in peace. And in that same year, the first international trade of America was in Mayport, as the French traded munitions for an English ship. Then Jean Rabeau returned to Fort Caroline with more settlers. The King of Spain, however, had sent Admiral Pedro Menendez to remove the French presence in La Florida. In 1565, Jean Rabeau is captured by the Spanish on the beach at Matanzas Inlet. They are taken in groups of ten across that inlet with their hands tied behind their backs. So many people say, and I'm not sure this is actually in the journals, but it says the line was drawn in the sand. And they could cross over it and be Catholic and live, or they could die there. Well, Jean Ribot did not cross over the line. So kneeling, he recites a psalm and dies by the sword, a hero and a martyr for religious freedom. The Spanish take over Fort Caroline and settle in St. Augustine. The victors wrote the history. The Spanish wrote the French right out of history. And the thought that it was a lost colony, it was a lost attempt, it was a failed attempt, doesn't compute with me because we today live in the freedom of religious freedom. I will say that I believe when Jean Ribot knelt in the sand of Matanzas and quoted Psalm 132, he wasn't just quoting it. He was speaking to his God. He was making covenant with his God for this land. And it was for a place to be able to live and worship freely. We do have three schools that were named for Jean Ribot. One is the elementary school at Mayport. It is now the Marine Science Center.